Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well, all staying safe and healthy and uh, not going too crazy. Hold up at home, you know, it's been a while. Uh, this video is kind of like a random vlog over the course of two days, I believe, just showing what we've been up to and some recipes that we've tested. I've had this footage for over a week now, I believe, so it's a little outdated, but I figured I'd throw it up anyway. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how I want to organize my content now that like kind of all the days are blurring together at this point. Please let me know if there are any specific types of videos you want me to make. If you want us to start doing mukbangs, we'd love to do that. Some Q and A's, if there's any specific recipes that you want me to test out, like I'm up for literally anything. Thing. Let me know in the comments what you guys are doing to stay occupied, any shows that you've been enjoying or video games or movies that you'd recommend or like any activities. I've been thinking about trying to get my hands on another puzzle. We'll see. But I hope that you enjoy this video and I'll see you very soon. I have so much footage backlogged so there's gonna be a lot of vlogs dropping soon. So I actually have to start this vlog with a little bit of a voiceover because I woke up that day and the first thing I did was test out a recipe for vegan challah. I used to make challah all the time in college when I was just vegetarian. The recipe that I loved contained lots of eggs and lots of honey and since going vegan I've only attempted to make it one time and I used the Follow Your Heart egg replacer and there used to be an I don't think they still make it anymore but it's a bee free honey that's made of apples and it came out pretty well but I wanted to try it again using aquafaba in place of the eggs so several years ago I tested out a vegan macaron recipe which I think I'm gonna test out again now that I'm in isolation and I have so much more time that recipe was also aquafaba based and for that to kind of concentrate the protein structure of the aquafaba to make a really nice stiff meringue what I did was actually simmer the aquafaba until it was reduced to half of its original volume and then you refrigerate it and it gets really thick and gelatinous and really does mimic the texture of an egg white so I thought I would try doing that for this recipe too and then in place of the honey I actually still have some of the bee free honey because a couple years back um, right after I moved to Colorado actually I saw it on clearance at Sprouts and I bought literally every single jar they had left because I loved it so much and I didn't want to be without it so I still have some but I didn't want to use it in the rest because I know I don't know if people can find it still so instead I tried to use some brown rice syrup um, which kind of mimics the flavor of honey not entirely though I thought that maple syrup would be too strong of a flavor but other than substituting in the brown rice syrup for the honey and the aquafaba for the eggs I pretty much just followed a regular challah recipe and um, it came out pretty well you'll see later in this vlog but I'm just adding in this explanation now because that morning I filmed all the steps of mixing the dough and kneading it and letting it rise and um, then dividing it into two balls and letting it rise again but that's where we're leaving off in this uh, vlog that's how I spent my morning hey guys I'm squinting because it's extremely bright out but um we are going on a walk because we've been trying to hit 10,000 steps every day since the gyms have been closed uh, and it snowed seven inches yesterday. We actually went on a long walk yesterday in the snow, uh, which was really something. Watch out for that. Oh, there's a large mound of snow now. It doesn't look large in the, uh, oh, here, let me... in the uh, wide angle. Eric for scale. <laughs> Charming little pathway. It feels like a little Christmas village. I thought you were going to say this charming little man. Well, that too. You're a charming little man. My face is numb. So is mine. I can't talk right. <laughs> oh, it's so nice out, actually. A little windy. Yeah. A little, a little cold. Look what we've encountered. It's very hard to see, actually. There's no There's contrast. No but we found a snowman. Can stand behind it for contrast? Yeah. Eric for scale number two. This is a sizable snowman. I've actually never built a snowman. Ooh. Freshly shaved head. <laughs> like yours. It's so nice. <laughs> Good job whoever made this. Look at this little Are hands. these little rocks? Oh. <laughs> the power. <laughs> it's so long. Holy crap. Does it hurt? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> nice. Got back from our walk. Made a little plate of nachos. So leftover Mayakoba beans that Eric made a couple videos back in the Instant Pot and 
leftover nacho eggplant potato cheese and these chips and some habanero salsa back here. We've got our bread rising, our hollow dough. That's what it looks like. It's already doubled. I think I need to punch it down and give it a little fold and let it keep going. I have the space heater on to keep the uh, kitchen warm so the bread rises. It's time for us to spin the wheel over the cap now to um, roll out our, to shape our loaves. Okay. To shape Great. our lives. We cut it, I cut it into two so Eric could have his own little loaf. Can I smack it? I want to attempt to do a six strand. I mean, it's worth noting that you don't actually have to braid it at all. You could just put it into a sandwich loaf. A loaf pan, sorry. A loaf Sandwich pan? loaf pan. Or you could just bake it on a, uh, hold on. Oh, right, right. Sorry. You could bake it on a tray. I'm gonna get my phone so I can look at a, up a tutorial. So first we have to roll them out. I really hope this is good. <laughs> it smells amazing. I truly hope. We could make um, French toast out of it later this week. I know there's just so many rules with making bread. I'm just scared whatever I do is gonna mess it up. The only way we can mess it up now is by burning it. Okay, well there's still time, honey. Tutorial says, join them all up here, pinch them together. Let's try to follow this, okay. Take the right strand and cross it over. Take the second from the left strand and cross over to right side. Is that right? Take the what? Second to the left. Oh, so including, second from the left. including the one we just put. Yes. Right. Create a small gap between the four inner strands in the middle. Okay. Okay, so it's like this and now there's a gap. I'm so confused. Take left strand and bring down to the middle in the gap between the four inner strands. Huh? So this one goes in here, and then this one goes back down? Is that right? What am I doing? I'm so confused. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, this I is gotta jacked up. This is really jacked up here. You got it? You got a system, baby? It's gonna, it looks so dumb. <laughs> but it's yours. Look, it's your little baby. this is shit, this is shit, and the middle <laughs> section is good. So the, the one time I made kala, I did that and it like, took up the entire pan when I baked it. And it was like, do I- In a good way? Can, 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 can we take it apart? Will you help me re-roll it? Well, I don't think so, we should, I think we should let it sit again. <laughs> you know, I wonder if we fried this. It, is a hala donut a thing? I don't know. You know, you know what bothers me the most about what? that what? is that the part that should be hard, the braiding part, was super easy for me, and the part that should be easy, which is rolling it out, made it made the whole thing difficult. We redid it. Sarah re-rolled them out, and she kind of showed me how to do them better, and then we kind of tag team the braid. Give it a little brushy brush. Just dripping with bean juice. Am I right? Am I right? But you are right. Let these rise for another half hour-ish, and then uh, preheat the oven during the last little big bit of that, and uh, bake them. You excited? I am excited. We're about to have more, more hollow than we can reasonably consume in the next week. We'll have to freeze one. Don't you worry, I'll eat it. <laughs> okay. It's the following day. I didn't update you on the bread last night. Look at it. Looks more beautiful than this one. It's a little asymmetrical. Peep that crumb. It's so good. <laughs> I'm about to have coffee. Stocked up on some of this cold brew. I still have um, this half and half. Lots of extra aquafaba. And um, we also got some of this. I probably wouldn't buy it again. I think I just like mixing my own coffee and half and half better. I just got back from a run. Eric came with me. He's still running now though, just because he he runs more. So I got in a lot of steps. I think I got like 6,000 of my 10,000 step goal. Um, it's fairly sunny out. A lot of the snow has melted, so it wasn't too bad. I started out super chilly. I was wearing a long sleeve. And then by the end of it, I was just like super toasty. Um, and so I'm wearing my shirt as a scarf. We did a couple sprints too on the way home. I think I'm gonna have some more challah now. I think, I forgot to mention, 
I did mine plain, but Eric put uh, everything bagel seasoning on there. So there's some poppy seeds and sesame seeds and um, dehydrated garlic and onion. It's really good. I think I'm going to toast a piece and put some butter on it as a snack. Here's my post run. Little snack slash lunch. I got a couple of Japanese sweet potatoes at the Asian market the other day. I just uh, prick a couple holes in it, rinse it off really well, and then I microwave it for about six-ish minutes. Kind of depends on the size. It's like a microwave baked potato. I like having these with either tahini or ooh, steam almond butter. So I added almond butter to this and a little bit of this plantain hot sauce that I got from Costa Rica. And then these are just frozen green beans that I microwaved with it. I think after I eat this, we're going to try to make a knockoff of the Louisville vegan jerky because we just got this 12 pound box of soy curls jerky. from the Butler website. Jerky, oh my God, I can't look it up. Jerky, 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 jerky. The jerky dance. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go uh, do some recipe research. But like, look, this is freaking massive. I don't know how we're gonna finish all this. <laughs> I had to vlog that Yesterday night, we dragged our mattress out into the living room so that we could um, watch Contagion in bed. <laughs> so, here's our setup. Eric's playing video games. Can I also please note that he is using a cooler as a chair? Well, we just we just <laughs> exercise. I don't want to get my sweaty butt in the bed. Soaking about four cups of the dry curls in hot water. And um, we're kind of loosely building off the recipe from vegan blueberry dot com <laughs> if you just search soy curl jerky it'll be one of the first the top hits we're gonna kind of add our own flair to it i think i'm gonna split this in half and eric's gonna season half and i'm gonna season the other half uh, but first i have to drain them and then you want to squeeze out as much of the excess liquid as possible so that it can soak up all of the sauce that's preheating to 250. <laughs> what are you doing we're milking the soy curls. I'm using a big nut milk bag, but you could use a, you can do it by hand, or you can use a clean tea towel, but you just, I didn't need to use a drawstring. <laughs> you just, there's tons of, of liquid in here. So you wanna rehydrate them, and then you wanna unhydrate them somewhat. So they absorb stuff. So what flavor are you gonna make? Smoky Chipotle. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna kind of follow what you just laid out there for me. Yeah, okay. So at least two tablespoons of oil, um, some amount of soy sauce. You don't have to use soy sauce if you don't want to. I know that uh, Louisville jerky does. In all of their In flavors. every flavor. Okay. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna send it. All right. Put, uh, you know, some of that. Uh, so this is leftover, I'll hold this up for the camera. Leftover. Uh, chipotle peppers in adobo. Oh, I smell that. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put some of that in there. I know there are gonna be some chunks of peppers. You don't want that. I'm gonna mash this up a little so there's not... I'm gonna do some pepper, pepper, pepper. Onion powder. The general flavor makers. Lots of garlic powder. And then only because I read this on their website, they said a hint of nutmeg, but this Ew. is all. Ew. That's all spice. It's all spice, yeah. I'm gonna put a touch. Okay. Just a touch. Where did they say this? For their smoky chipotle flavor? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna give that a whisk. Do you think that's enough? Let's see. You wanna give it a smell? Put half of it in there. Oh, yeah. I think it's about half. You gotta get your hands in there. It's inevitable. <sighs> Really massage it. It mostly tastes like soy sauce. You put too much soy sauce? Mm-hmm. Might massage in a little more of this. This adobo sauce. We, we've overdone it on the soy sauce. No, I, over, <laughs> I overdid it. So instead of just, instead of each of us making a different flavor, we're just gonna throw all this in. Sarah's gonna fix it. And dilute it. I think I'm gonna actually puree this. Oh, okay. And make it a sauce. And then maybe we can add like some smoked paprika. Maybe we can add some of this mm -hmm. liquid smoke. Maybe we can add some hot sauce. I want to add some Worcestershire sauce too. It's like, cause it's not salty enough. I think now we might have to add a little bit more salt. 
definitely a little more oil. The oil is just what keeps it moist because we're gonna be cooking it super long and low. And if there's no oil, then it dries out. Did you add any of this? I did not. Let's, have, let's just add this. Yeah. Sometimes smoked paprika isn't right. I agree. Totally agree. You have to be really gentle with, with your addition of smoked paprika. Okay, I'm basically just adding more of everything you added. Except for soy sauce. Yeah. Sarah took a bite and she was like, no, that's not right. It just tastes like I mean, it, soy sauce sandwich. It wasn't bad, but it was just too salty. She said I was going to be hypertensive after. <laughs> it's fine. We have a 12 pound box. We can we have plenty of time to explore, <laughs> explore flavors. <laughs> so I'm going to throw this in the in here. What? Oh, here. Actually, this is the time to use this. What? <laughs> The thunder stick. Thunder stick. Have you ever stick. used this? No. I rarely use it. I have a lot of gadgets I guess I don't really use that often. There we go. <laughs> Spice it up. Chili powder? Cumin? Anything else? I think it's fine. It. More black pepper probably. I'll give you a spatula this time. Thank you. My hand is still red and greasy from... Yeah, don't wipe your eyes. I thought you were going to say... Careful around the eyes. <laughs> Is it better? Mm -hmm. Eric made the call to add some of this umami seasoning from Trader Joe's, which has got like mushrooms, oh yeah, porcini mushroom powder, button mushroom powder, some black pepper, thyme, mustard. And it really did boost the uh, umami because I thought it was like just about salty enough, but it was missing some like depth of flavor. Okay. Pizzazz. We need some like MSG to throw in here. And now we're just gonna spread it out. Kind of cook this the way you cook granola. Like low, slow, and uh, stirring often because the edges will cook faster than the pieces in the middle. So like I said, it's 250 degrees now. Probably gonna give it a stir like every 10 to 15 minutes. Probably like for at least an hour, I would guess. But I'll update you. Can you tell them about Chris and Jasmine making granola the other night. Eric was FaceTiming with Chris from Sweet Simple Vegan. They were playing a video game and Jasmine was working in the background and she was testing granola recipe and the timer was going off like every like five minutes and then it got burnt at the end because it just it goes from like perfectly cooked to burnt so fast. So annoying. Which is why so many timers. Well it's like that uh have you seen that meme with avocados? It's like it takes a thousand years to be ripe and then it's only ripe for one day and then it's rotten. Yeah. It's so true. It is true. Yeah. Well, that's how this is. <laughs> this is super random, but we're kind of bored. <laughs> so we're going to use this silk heavy whipping cream that I showed a few videos back. We found this at Safeway. Silk now makes the half and half and a whipping cream and uh, first time trying it. And I'm going to whip the entire carton. It has Water, coconut oil, sunflower oil, fava bean protein, guar gum, sunflower lecithin, what was it? Soap? Flour. Damn it. So I think I'm gonna add in a little bit of sugar and vanilla as well, but <clears throat> I mean, why not, right? We'll have whipped cream sitting in our fridge for us. When the, Ooh, when, this is... When the, when the zombies come. Yeah. This is very thick. Ooh, I'm, I'm concerned. Look, it won't even pour. Uh-oh. This is like a can of coconut. <gasps> I just, I couldn't see that from here. I don't know if you'll, you can see it on camera, but it's like so thick. Should we cut the carton open? But how do I get all of it out of here? I legitimately think this product is a dud. Really? Yeah, it's not whipping at all. What? Look at this. It looks like a chunky pudding. Tastes great. It's chunky. This is really disturbing to me, honestly. Maybe keep whipping it? This product gets a thumbs down for me. I, um, I kept whip whisk whipping? Whisk whipping it? <laughs> whipping it in the KitchenAid. And then uh, it was separating, kind of like curdling. So I was like, let's transfer it to the Vitamix and see if it will help blend everything back together. And it separated even more. It's like buttermilk. Well... It's like a butter and whey now. I went on their website and they list three recipes to use this for. 
and one, two are, two are pasta dishes and one is a dark chocolate truffle recipe. So they're not like saying make whipped cream out of it. They're saying like use it like cream. Use it in cooking. Right. And all the reviews, people saying like, oh, I cooked a dish with it. It was great. And all the people who gave negative re reviews were saying they tried to whip it and it did this. There's a little whipped cream icon on the thing. The half and half though, I like. So do you see what I mean? It's like completely separated. This is just pure coconut fat, it's which tastes good, but like you could just buy coconut cream in a can. It tastes like coconut. Do you see how thick that is? <laughs> it's like Play-Doh. Look at it. Anyway, I am going to save this because I figure if I like blend it into coffee, like put this with cold brew in a blender, it might turn into like a bulletproofish coffee. You know what I mean? I just don't want to waste it, but... We're making sushi, so I prepped some veggies, some avocado, julienne, some cucumbers, and some carrots. Eric's making sushi rice right now. Jerky's looking good. Probably needs another 20 minutes, I would guess. We made some little sushis. Um, well, <laughs> you saw all the vegetables that we put, and some of them have peanuts as well, roasted salted peanuts. I didn't know that avocado peanut rolls were a thing until I started dating Eric, but they're dope. I'm also making a little batch of miso soup. It's very dark here. There's scallions, wakame, some tofu. I got some of this um, vegetarian chicken flavor bouillon. So that's the soup base, and then I'm gonna add the miso in at the last moment. Here's our little soups. I'm obsessed with these bowls still. Oops, Sushi. Sorry. Gonna go find a movie to watch. Lighting's really bad, but we're in our... Uh, well, it's not a pillow fort. It's still technically our bed. <laughs> our floor bed. Having oh. snacks. Got some Oreos. Eric's got some of our jerky. It which, is so good. Yeah, it came out really well. We ended up baking it for a long time. Like, like two hours. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, baby. You know why I love it? Why? It was so spicy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. We put in a lot of those peppers. Um, so yeah, we're snacking. And we're watching this documentary about CrossFit. Yeah. <laughs> that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. I am always so bad at remembering to outro my videos. So I'm um, trying to be better about that. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. And again, leave any um, recommendations or requests for video topics down below. And I'll see you soon. Bye.